Hello, you beautiful nerds. There is a new animated series on Amazon that one of our subscribers told me about, and now that I've watched it, I have some thoughts. That's right, we read and respond to comments. Most of the, like 90% of the time. So if there is something that you guys want us to review, please let us know. But anyway, about this show, I obviously can't stop talking about how much I loved Invincible. And this show reminded me a lot of that style. The animation is very similar, and their approach when depicting aspects of the fantasy genre is somewhat similar to the way Invincible approaches the comic book genre. But this show got started in a very different way than Invincible. In fact, the story of how this show got started almost rivals the plot of the show itself. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's let's talk about what we're talking about. So pound a pint of stale ale and let's have a quick chat about... But first, a prelude. In the year of our Lord 2015, a group of voice actors got together and started streaming their Dungeons and Dragons campaigns. Members included cartoon legends Ashley Johnson, Laura Bailey, Talies and Jaffe, Marisha Ray, Liam O'Brien, Travis Willingham, Sam Regal, and Matthew Mercer serving as the Dungeon Master. This started out as a fun thing they did privately until actress Felicia Day, an official expert at making money doing stuff you wouldn't think people would care about, encouraged their group to start streaming their get-togethers for Geek and Sundry. Going by the name Critical Role, the group of actors continued streaming their campaigns for years. And in March of 2019, Critical Role launched a Kickstarter campaign to raise funds for a 22-minute animation special called Critical Role The Legend of Vox Machina Animated Special. And to say it was a success would be a huge understatement. These guys raised over $11 million. Critical Role was all set to go beyond their initial ambitions and actually make a full first season of their animated series. And then, later that year, luck struck again when Amazon officially partnered with Critical Role and pumped in that sweet, sweet Bezos money to fund an extra episode of the first season and to produce a season two. Let's talk about the look for a second, because for a show that was funded on Kickstarter, it's not half bad. I particularly like the character design for all the main guys. They're all kind of the different popular fantasy archetypes, and their clothing is a great representation of that. I mean, if you look at a still image of them all, you'll be able to figure out who does what pretty quick. Except her. She's probably my favorite character, and you wouldn't guess that she's like the Thor of the group. She even gets her own like Infinity War Thor moment. It's kind of crazy. The animation is pretty cool, and it's kind of reminiscent of an anime style, but I think the reason it looks this way has more to do with the budget. They use a lot of tricks of the anime trade to make scenes more intense, but those techniques are also faster to animate. It's just a one drawing like this, I think, <laughs> and then the background is just going, <laughs> so you're just like, whoa, this is awesome. It's just the background moving. It's just a drawing of a hand doing this, and the background is moving and tracking in a way that makes you believe. It's being smart about how you're using your time. Anime does that arguably better than anyone. If you draw a face once, and then you draw a mouth, that's low pencil mileage, so then you can shift your focus and expenses and budget to the scenes where they just go all out. Like I mentioned before, the style actually reminds me of Invincible, which is funny because this show also has a tongue-in-cheek vibe to its storytelling. We get a lot of nods to common tropes found in fantasy books and movies, but for a premise that's kind of derived from D&D &D campaigns, the world building and the plot itself is rich and compelling. The story takes place in the fictional world of Extrandia on the continent of Taldori, and follows a band of mercenaries with a devil may care attitude and a penchant for again fucking wasted. Look at you scrawny ass. Too weak to tickle your own pickle. Are you offering to help? Yeah. <clears throat> well, no, I... Fuck you! If I had to describe the vibe of this show in one phrase, I'd say it's like the Suicide Squad, but in Middle Earth. The, the, the good Suicide Squad movie, not the... Not that other one. It's definitely an R-rated series, but it's not annoyingly so. Sometimes I feel like when shows get the green light to do whatever they want, the dialogue ends up sounding like when kids learn how to swear for the first time. Like it's just way too much. But all the vulgar and violent behavior seems pretty well balanced with all the emotional moments in the series. If protecting carts from swindlers and killing goblins for gold isn't getting us anywhere, maybe we could try doing some good this time? I kind of like all the main characters. Again, they're all voiced by a gaggle of pros in the business. But the show also takes the time to delve into their backstories and really figure out what trauma from their past drives them, and coincidentally, 
what haunts them. We explore Percy's backstory more than the other characters in the first season, but it doesn't really seem like there's a lead of the series. The focus pretty much shifts scene to scene and sometimes episode to episode. The dialogue can be kind of cheesy at times, but it's the good kind of cheese. It's like Firefly level cheese. Plus, who doesn't love cheese? What the fuck? There's no cheese? My biggest issue is that there are times when the lead characters have a ridiculous level of plot armor. Going into mostly any movie or show like this, you know that none of the main characters are gonna die, but there are moments in this show that warrant an eye roll or two. Like in the third episode, these super creepy killer ghost things are introduced and it's legit scary how brutally and quickly they kill the guards in their first scene. But then when they get to our heroes, they somehow all manage to be fine. They even do the same life sucking move to every single member of the group and no one even manages to be like hurt at the end. There was even a time when a character just forgot or chose not to use their power to escape a situation. Then they got their ass kicked nearly to death and then they just used their power to escape. It's like, why didn't you do that before? It's kind of a nitpick, but it was my biggest problem with the show. One of the reasons I loved Arcane so much is because it felt like anyone could die at any moment. Not that I'm some weirdo who loves death, but I do think it makes stories more interesting when they're there's actually a chance that the heroes might fail. It took some of the dramatic resonance out for me, but this show also doesn't take itself as seriously as Arcane, so it was pretty easy to excuse. As I mentioned earlier, the cast is full of rock stars. I mean, not not really. It's just, it's full of a bunch of nerds like me. But those nerds are fucking killing it in the voice acting game. And there are some great actors in the supporting roles as well. Steven Root, Stephanie Beatrix, Dominic Monaghan, David Tennant, Gina Torres, Tracy Toms, the goddess, and Kelly Hu just to name a few. Well, I mean, just to name the most popular ones. This was a very enjoyable show. It's pretty fun. It didn't blow me away or anything, but it was a solid fantasy story with intriguing twists and lovable characters to keep you emotionally invested through the first season. I want to keep this review relatively spoiler free, so I'm not going to get into the ending or the beginning, or episode seven. Ep episode seven is fucking crazy, man. <laughs> but there is a lot to like about this facetious, slightly sophomoric show about a bunch of cool, overtly crass, and unapologetically violent losers. I mean, like, folks who have lost stuff. My ranking, I liked it. All right, that's it for this review. I'm still in the middle of doing our last fan requested video. Sorry, I had to pump this one out real quick while I worked on that one, cause that video is gonna be long. Cause I got a, cause I have a lot of thoughts. Speaking of Batman related stuff and thoughts. I also still have so many thoughts about the Batman. My review was long, but I could probably do another 20 minutes on the narrative, social, and philosophical themes of that film. So if that's something that you guys would dig, just let me know in the comments. But until next time, stay safe my little ziggurats, and may the force be with you. Oh hi! I didn't see you there. Well, thank you for watching another video. While you're still here, go ahead and click the bell thingy and the thumbs up thingy and the, what's another thing you can click? You can click on the comments, put in some comments, talk about what you, oh shit, I lost my bookmark. If there's anything you guys do want me to talk about though, feel free to leave it in the comments. Like, subscribe so you can get updates on new videos and episodes of the pod. Anyway, thanks again. I'll see you next time. May the force be with you.